Hey everyone, Timmy Hill here, NASCAR driver of the 66roofclaim.com Toyota. Uh, going live here with uh, roofclaim.com. I'll let a few of you join and I'll kind of repeat myself maybe once as a few more people join. But Roofclaim has been doing this giveaway and uh, your questions for myself. They've shipped me all your questions along with a bunch of names for a giveaway today. So, uh, hey Victor, thanks for stopping by. LJ, I see you guys in the comment section. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, we're ready for a, uh, a nice evening of racing here in Kansas tonight. Looking forward to that. Our car looks great. Went through tech already. Uh, ready for a great evening of racing. So, I uh, hope you guys are as well. I tell you, as a couple more people join in, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and um, select the uh, the first question and kind of start rolling with some of the questions right now. Uh, hey Ruby, I see you there in the comments. Thank you for joining. So I'll just pop this bad boy open and see what the first question is. All right, here we go. First question is from Matthew Salby from Lincoln, Rhode Island. And the question reads, has your success in practice in iRacing translated to better on-track performances each week? Yeah, I think so. You know, well, one thing I've always, I've always done is use iRacing as a, as a tool and to help propel um, all my on-track performances in real life to help me. I try to run as many laps as we can, especially right now with no practice, no qualifying. We, ha we hop right on these race cars and, um, and unfortunately for myself, I've been in the sport for 10 years now, so I rely on past uh, races I've done um, for uh, for experience and for knowledge and for all the things that come along with uh, for the that race coming up. So uh, I see quite a few of you rolling in now. Thank you for joining. We're um, we're rolling through the questions that you've submitted for me, and then we will roll into all the all the names uh, that have been submitted for the giveaway winner. So uh, next question I see has been submitted for me. Um, this question is from Sean from Boca Raton, Florida. Boca Raton. Boca Raton. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, hopefully y'all don't uh, <laughs> judge me for uh, <laughs> some of the reading here. Uh, but the question is, what is it like traveling and do you have a favorite memory? So traveling has been a lot of fun. Uh, I've been so many places, so many, so many really fun places. You know, we. We go a lot of different places. Uh, Vegas is always fun for us, going out west. Enjoy doing that. I enjoy the uh, scenery out west. You know, Arizona is always neat to go to. Um, we're in Kansas this weekend, and it's a really pretty area here, especially around the racetrack. Uh, people here are great. Uh, it's nice to go to the beaches, and so we go to uh, Daytona and uh, like Miami. Those are always neat as well. And then when we get to go to places like New Hampshire, those are always fun. I love seafood, so to go eat some lobster and, and some things like that, clam chowder, uh, or clam chowder is what they like to call it up there. It's always um, uh, a lot of fun. So, no, heck yeah, we, we enjoy traveling and uh, enjoy all the places that NASCAR gets to take us. Uh, hey, everybody, I see everybody's rolling in here. Um, let's see, next question is Shane from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Um, and the question was, what made you get into racing? So I fell in love with racing when I would go to the tracks with my father. Um, my father raced uh, um, quite a bit through the 90s and early 2000s. And I would go to the racetracks with him and just uh, had this love and passion for racing. I love what my dad did. And uh, so I began racing at an early age at 10 years old. Uh, we began racing go-karts at a local track and just really progressed through the ranks to, to get where I am now. But uh, my passion came from my father and um, I followed his footsteps and, and I, I've been enjoying the ride. It's been a lot of fun. I really enjoy what I do, so I uh, couldn't be happier. Um, hey, Cindy, I see you, uh, you joined. Um, looks like you're local. All right, next question. Uh, this one's from Jason from Mesa, Arizona. 
How do you prepare for races knowing the temperature will be hot for that weekend? Well, like this particular weekend, it's 90 to 92 degrees here in Kansas. Luckily, it will be a, a night race, so that will help things out. So uh, typically, the rule of thumb is the race car is going to be about 30 degrees warmer than the outside uh, temperature. So knowing that, we try to hydrate as much as we can. Um, after uh, race after race of being in these race cars, your body tends to adapt to those conditions. I know th the drivers who take time off and aren't doing this regularly, they take a, uh, a bigger beating just because their bodies aren't adapting to these conditions. So for me, being in so many races, I think my body's just more adapting to it. We try to hydrate as much as possible, but definitely it's a, uh, it's a tough condition. You know, dehydration is definitely real in these cars, so uh, you try to do as best as, best as you can. Okay, next question. Okay, Diane from Goodyear, Arizona. So we got a couple of people from Goodyear, or not Goodyear, Arizona. Goodyear's right down the road from Phoenix Raceway. Appreciate your question, Diane. So her question is, what does your pre-race meal consist of? Uh, it's a variety of different things. Today, it was a Subway sandwich, but it changes weekly. Last week I had barbecue, wasn't the best decision. Um, but it can be a variety of things, you know. Uh, uh, we love having hot dog rollers in our in our hauler, so it could be a hot dog, it could be a lot of things. So I don't have anything in particular. It changes weekly. So, uh, hey Jamie, right, I see you down in the comment section saying that we're doing a great job this year. Appreciate that, we've had some good runs in our roofclaim.com Toyota. So uh, while I'm doing this, I, want, I do wanna take a break and I appreciate everybody being so supportive of us at NBM Motorsports and myself. Um, and thank you to roofclaim.com for uh, joining us this year. Hope everybody has time to uh, head over to their website and uh, hit them up for even a free quote for a, uh, um, to have them look at your roofs. You know, it's one thing neat about Roofclaim is they, uh, they have drone ability so they can fly drones over top of your house for, uh, uh, to take pictures, to take looks at your, at your, at your roofs. Um, so it's a very neat process. I know right now at COVID times, everybody's a little afraid of what they can and can't do. So uh, head on over to roofclaim.com and uh, check them out. They got a lot of ways uh, they can help you out. I'll head over to the next question. Uh, this is a longer que question. Is Grayson from Waterville, Ohio. Uh, throughout all the levels of NASCAR, which drivers have you gotten along with the best? Also, which drivers have been a hard time to get along with um that's a good question um typically when i come to the racetracks i you know i try to get along with as many drivers as possible at the same time i i, I come here for business you know I, I don't try to make these guys too much for my friends i don't hang out with many people outside of racing just so i can come and do my best job as i possibly can i don't want to cut people breaks because uh i could be too close to them so um, I, I don't say I have any particular person that's, that's my best friend or that I hang out with the most. Uh, as far as hard to get along, hard getting along with, uh, I think most of the guys in the garage are, are pretty good guys. Some of the guys' driving characteristics on the tracks are what distinguish my frustrations all the time. Um, the Cup, the Cup Series races are really good. I, I don't have a lot of complaints there. Those guys are really good drivers. Uh, I, I'd say probably. My frustration comes from a lot of the rookie drivers in the lower divisions, probably the most. So uh, I don't want to name any names, but um, yeah, uh, hopefully that answers that question. Next question is from LJ. Um, I don't even know how to read that. Biloxi, Mississippi. Hopefully I read that Biloxi. right. Biloxi. Yeah. Who has been your favorite competitor in NASCAR so far in your career? This kind of follows along with the uh, um, the last question, and what I'll do is I'll kind of change the question up. I'll change it to um, who has been my favorite teammate. So I've, I've had quite a few. Um, I think one of them could be this guy right here, Carl Long. Wait a minute, I'm texting you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's been a pretty good one, but I've had a lot of good teammates. Uh, my brother, we're kind of teammates. We never raced at the same time, but we're sharing a seat 
in my truck. He's he's been great to get along with. We raced each other growing up, so that's always been a fun kind of a rivalry. But we we kind of uh, have a good time with that. Um, let's see another good one. Uh, I enjoyed Blake Cook when he was my teammate. Um, yeah, so we, we've had some good ones. All right, next question. Uh, is Austin from Orlando, Florida? What piece of advice would you give a young aspiring driver? So it's been kind of a kind of a neat time right now, uh, with no practice, no qualifying. So I've gotten some different questions from younger drivers uh, about how to approach your races right now, and um, I think the biggest thing I would tell somebody is just to be patient. You know, a lot of times you see guys in the races so early um, because they're trying to get maybe after things too hard with a lack of experience. So sometimes uh, they're pressured with no practice, no qualifying to push the limits right away and they end their race. And, um, you know, one, one big rule of thumb I always tell people is you can't win the race unless you're at the finish. So um, uh, to finish first, you must first finish. So that's, for, that's the biggest thing. Be patient, learn, uh, gradually get better, especially with no practice. Learn your truck, learn your, your cars. Um, so that's probably my biggest piece of advice. All right, I see quite a few more, quite a few more people are rolling in here. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, next question from Taylor from Jacksonville, Florida. After traveling the country, if you would live anywhere in the U.S., where would it be and why? So I currently live in High Point, North Carolina. Love it there. Uh, the heat's not too strong, yet the winters aren't too cold. If I had to move somewhere else, uh, I think I'm more of a, I think I'm more of a heat person. Than I am a cool person, so probably more south. And I do like the beach, but I don't know if I'd be close to a beach. Um, probably somewhere south. And I, I'm not a big fan of the West Coast just because I get congested for some reason. The, the air out there is tougher on me. So probably somewhere in the southeast. Um, what do you think, Brian? What do we need to pick a name? Me to pick a name? Uh, well, you know, should we, should we pick a winner? When should, when should we pick some winners or a winner? Well, let's answer a couple more questions. First. We're gonna do a couple more questions. Yeah. We're gonna keep you guys on the hook here. Uh, we got a whole box of questions There's here. One from Kentucky. Uh, we got another question. Uh, this question's from Lori uh, from Mount Sterling, Kentucky. Uh, what is my favorite karting memory? Now, this is a fun question because it can be a couple things. Uh, I grew up go karting. Uh, in 2004, 2005 area, and I raced those for about three years. And that's what started my career. But every now and again, we do have go-kart races that we do uh, as a group with the team. Um, so I'll tell you both of those. So my favorite memory um, in my go-kart growing up, in my early stages of my career, are definitely probably my first championship in 05. That was always really neat. We had some great battles, and um, as a kid, we loved uh, just getting better and, and just trash talking. I love that. So, um, but we've had some incredible stories with go kart racing. Um, even this past, uh, even this past couple weeks ago, uh, Indianapolis has a go kart track right outside their speedway, and typically the whole the entire MBM crew goes out. And uh, pit crew, mechanics, everybody goes out and wants to run against each other. So we go on out there and we just trash each other, run each other into the fence, spin each other out, uh, goof off. Um, so a couple of guys like to brag, but they don't really have much experience. So uh, we, uh, they tell you always no bumping, no bumping, no bumping, but of course, we don't want to do that. We want to bump and bang and tear each other up. So we, couple, it wasn't this past year. It was a couple years ago. We sent one of our guys over top the tire barrier, got him stuck, and uh, I'm surprised we didn't get kicked out. But the uh, track crew was not very happy with us. So that was a pretty fun memory. Um, I see you guys in the chat. Thank you for rooting for the RoofClaim.com Toyota. Looking forward to a great race tonight, Kansas. Uh, how about that midweek? A midweek night race. Uh, this is the first one we're doing on Thursday. We've been trying some uh, some Wednesday races, some Monday races, Thursday night. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Looking forward to that. Um, putting on a good show. I see that intimidator comment in the comment section. Thank you so much. I'm trying to live up to that name. All right, next question. This is Ryan 
Brian Lerman from Coral Springs, Florida. Uh, what advice would you give people who want to be NASCAR drivers? Well, it's a very tough sport. Only 40 guys get to compete at this level. Um, you know, one thing I tell people all the time, a great way to get started is to go through iRacing. And of course, I'm sure most of you have seen some of the things that we've done on iRacing with NASCAR is on their break, but that's a very inexpensive way to get involved in racing, kind of learn your craft. Uh, it takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of uh, dedication, and um, I think it's a great way to kind of get started, you know, for people who are really looking forward to uh, giving this a go, seeing what they got. It's the uh, safest and most inexpensive way to get involved. All right. Somebody has the same name as I do. Uh, this question is from Timmy Bellis from Rocky Gap, Virginia. Uh, Timmy, what, does it, what did it feel like after racing three races at Texas Motor Speedway in the extreme heat? And a follow-up, what do you drink to recover? Um, that one was a tough weekend. Um, we had two races in one day and then followed by a 500 mile race the next day. Uh, my favorite drink is a, the, the Blue Powerade. Uh, that's probably my favorite. It gets me a little sugar, gets me hydrated along with water. Uh, I know a lot of the NASCAR drivers, they drink Pedialyte. Um, that's been a great, uh, uh, a great way to hydrate, but for me, I, I can't drink those. It's, uh, it's not my taste buds, I reckon. So I drink a lot of water, a lot of blue Powerade. Um, for some people, they, uh, it's like Coke and Pepsi. I prefer Powerade over Gatorade. Um, I think it's kind of 50-50. I don't think it's any, uh, one's better than the other. I think they're probably both, uh, both pretty equal. So, uh. That's my favorite drink. Well, then after the race, I have to drink the Terry Bradshaw bourbon to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having good fun here in Kansas in the holler. <laughs> All right, so this one, we get another question. Uh, another question from Goodyear, Arizona. This one comes from Charles. So it looks like we got multiple fans from Goodyear, Arizona. How tough is it running a triple header weekend going from truck to expanding the cup? I think we kind of just covered that one. So I'll roll to the next one. Appreciate your question, Charles. Uh, but it is a lot of fun um, to do all three series. Uh, this question is from Holly from St. Leonard, Maryland. There's a local question. Uh, and before I answer the question, I see some comments rolling in. We haven't done the name drawn yet. Uh, that's coming here uh, in a few more minutes. Thank you for stopping by. So this question is from Holly. Will you be racing at King George Speedway anytime soon? We miss seeing you and Tyler. Um, I think we're too busy right now to race King George. We still have our go-karts. Uh, sometimes Tyler gets out there a couple times a year, uh, but we've been extremely busy uh, this year uh, getting back going. we got a lot of races that we're trying to make up. There's quite a few weeks that uh, we've, we've missed uh, that NASCAR is trying to make up. So uh, this year may not happen. But we definitely still have our go-karts and we uh, love coming out to King George Speedway. Alrighty. Aaron from Louisville, Kentucky says, what's your favorite racetrack? Um, I, I have a lot. You know, I, I think my favorite racetrack has always been the one I've had the most success at naturally. So it's always been Daytona for me. But there's several I love going to. I love the super speedways. I love the road courses. And Bristol and Richmond are, are my favorite two short tracks. Love going to those. Uh, but definitely Daytona has a special place in my heart. Um, so since quite a few of you here, I think uh, what we're going to do is we're going to roll into our, our giveaway winners. Uh, thank you for your questions. Those are great questions. Um, I know there's a few more that I didn't get around to, but thank you for submitting. Um, so looking forward to uh, giving away some, some items. Uh, our prizes include, I'll read these off for you guys, two signed Timmy Hill Hero cards, two RoofClaim, uh, RoofClaim.com 66 hats. Those are great hats I got one myself. Uh, two two RoofClaim.com Timmy Hill t-shirts. Love the t-shirts. We got uh, RoofClaim on the front, 66 on the side, NBM Motorsports on there as well. Uh, we got a NASCAR e-gift card and Recently, RoofClaim.com has just added a 65-inch smart TV. So what a great prize there. Um, so, Brian, are we going to give away, is that all? It's all to one person. So, one okay. lucky person. So all those prizes are for one lucky person. And Brian 
has been shaking the box with all the names in them. I'm going to shake it up just a little bit more. Thank you, RoofClaim.com. One lucky winner is going to be very happy. Open the box up. I'm going to reach down in here. The winner is Aaron Lewis. Aaron Lewis, uh, we appreciate you uh, submitting your questions. Um, you are going to be our winner today. Thank you so much, RoofClaim.com, for for putting this on, uh, for supporting NASCAR, for supporting us. Uh, make sure everybody heads over to RoofClaim.com and uh, take a look at their website. They have multiple ways to come out and inspect your roofs. Um, like I said, the drone technology is incredible. I've seen that myself. Um, it's, it's really neat what they do in these times. Um, like I said, I know people feel uh, maybe unsafe right now, but they can fly drones out, uh, inspect your roof that way. It's, it's very neat. Uh, but again, congrats to Aaron Lewis. You are a winner today. Uh, thank you so much for RoofClaim.com for putting this on. Uh, tonight, guys, we're racing at Kansas Speedway. Uh, it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a, the first Thursday that, uh, that a cup race is run like this. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, we're excited to put on a good show. Our car is uh, through tech, through inspection right now, sitting on the grid. I'm excited to get behind the wheel and uh, put on a great show tonight. So thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate you. I uh, see all your comments rolling in. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to put on a, uh, a fun evening of racing. So uh, take care, guys.